matter, take a seat. It doesn't matter if it's been months. It doesn't matter if it's been weeks. You can't just drop your love when you're feeling weak. And if you can't push pause, and go and hit me, Howdy folks, and welcome to this week's episode of the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight. I'm your host, Dan Gross. Joining me today are Rochester-based blues rock songsmiths, that was an agreed-upon moniker, uh, Meg Williams and Sarah Rogers. Uh, <laughs> wait for the camera. <laughs> um, I think we don't have a specific release date yet, but later in June, these two are releasing a couple music videos of songs that you guys co-wrote, worked on together, play together, you both sing and play guitar. Not My Problem and Hurt. It's blue, so there's no G. Guys, yes. thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Um, I think to maybe the more, cas to more casual, maybe some more ardent uh, Rochester music fans, they know Meg Williams more. Maybe not Sarah Rogers as much. So we'll talk more about that, but for those maybe who don't know you two, as well. We're going to start off with a little bit about kind of your early life, how you got into music, and, and then we'll move on from there. So why don't we start from reading order, Sarah? How about you uh, go first? Sure. So from the beginning of time? or just I mean, if you've been time? around since the Big Bang, please enlighten <laughs> us. But maybe from the beginning of your time would be a good start. So I'm originally a trumpet player. Started mm -hmm. in fourth grade in the school system, whatever. Um, got into jazz in high school. Um, originally actually went to college at U of R for English, mm -hmm. and I was taking some classes at Eastman, getting into music ed, music therapy, ended up at Nazareth my second year, transferred, got into the jazz department there, and then I started singing a little bit with a trio on campus, um, and I met Mag through classes and through jazz there and through being in the music program, and she was playing out a little bit and invited me to sit in on a few shows, and the story of yeah. us like starting to play together is actually really funny. It is. I had a show at the Bug Jar, and I think it was just a couple days before mm -hmm. the show. I was like, "Hey, Sarah, come play." <laughs> and like, I've never really played with a right. trumpet player before, so I was just kind of like singing these horn lines to her, and she's like, "Yeah, I got this." And mm -hmm. we're just jamming for a few hours, and yeah. in our dorm, and. Then that the rest is history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was a really interesting setup. It was just like guitar, drum set, and like trumpet for one gig, and that was it. And we didn't even think about using guitar or using backup mm -hmm. vocals or anything like that. So for the first like year of us playing together, I was just yeah. playing trumpet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this year, it's I think it started a couple months ago that mm -hmm. we started doing the two guitars together because for a long time it was. I would play guitar, you'd play trumpet, and we'd right. both sing, and mm -hmm. then we started singing more together. And then I think it was <laughs> when I, like, wasn't it when I had, like, a cold or something? Yeah. And, I, like, <laughs> and, like, she needed to step off stage, so I, like, picked up the guitar, and I was like, I got it. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like us coming up with new things to do is just always, like, random. Yeah. <laughs> it was such a weird thing for a while. I, we brought, like, little pink maracas. And we're like, should I be shaking while she's playing? Like, trumpet doesn't fit here. Right. And it just seems like such a simple thing. Like, now we're both playing guitar and singing, but it took us two years to figure out time. that that was, like, the best combination <laughs> for us. Now, where did you get your start in music, Meg? I know that um, you're from this area-ish, and obviously you attended Nazareth as well. So mm -hmm. what, what was kind of your path from early music until maybe a little bit before you guys started jamming? I started um, when I was young taking piano lessons and being in the school band and then I think I was in about sixth grade and my mom bought an acoustic guitar and it was just sitting there in the house and she never took lessons or learned how to play it and so I was like, I'll learn how to play it and so I just fell in love with the guitar. And, yeah. Um, so then I just started taking lessons, playing with some groups in high school and then come to NAS and uh, join in groups up there, and jazz band, and then Foreman, yeah, mm -hmm. Foreman Meg Williams band, and now we're doing a lot more duo stuff, um, duo, solo, trio stuff, so, yeah. And now uh, you two both mentioned that you studied music therapy mm -hmm. at Nazareth. Mm -hmm. um, how has that influenced you, maybe individually, and then together, once you two started playing together 
as musicians, maybe you know, c coming at it from, okay, I have a, now a better understanding of psychologically how music sure. helps people. Does that influence you guys at all? Yeah, I don't think I think so much about the helping and the healing aspects of music in this kind of setting, but what I really took away from music therapy that can contribute to performance is that it's like a client-based thing when you're thinking about therapy, so you're always thinking about the music that's being given to you. So it really teaches you to use your ears and to listen and to understand that your music is communication in the moment mm -hmm. and that you're not just playing off of the page or playing the song as you know it. So things are changing, the time is changing, the tempo is changing, you know, the dynamics and the energy is changing. So I think music therapy has taught us to kind of read the music in a more in-the-now way mm -hmm. than if we didn't have it. Yeah, and I think music therapy influenced us as performers as well. Like it kind of goes both ways. So yeah, yeah, just um, yeah, and performing really influences music therapy. I think that's what I meant to say. Yeah, I meant the reverse. You know what I mean? The, the reverse. Yes. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you guys both have come to start in the blues rock idiom, let's say. <laughs> But neither of you gave you, neither of you have given me the impression that that was kind of the first thing, or maybe that wasn't the first yeah. influence. So Meg, since I know that you've been band leading for a while and you started playing out before Sarah was like when you were first decided, okay, you know what, it's time for me to play out, or I want to play out. Mm -hmm. Was there like this moment where you're like, I don't know what to play, or <laughs> did, or did it come very natural to you? Well, a lot of the music that. I grew up learning and learning electric guitar too. Electric guitar is really, I feel like, my main thing. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started on a lot of like classic rock, and then I got into blues and blues soloing. And um, so I feel like a lot of my influence is with blues and classic rock. And, but I have so many different interests. I think when we started the band, we had some funk, yeah. some blues, some rock, a country song. Like, mm -hmm. it, so I think we've kind of settled into what vibe we like the most. Mm -hmm. I feel like we spent a lot of time like, hey, I like all these different things, yeah. but yeah, I think it kind of settled into something that's like, yeah, this is what, sure. this is what we really like. For me, um, I'm the only musician in my family for mm -hmm. like a couple generations, so my journey through has been kind of self-initiated and a little bit slower than, looking back, I would have liked for it to be. My family was very into sports, still very is. So it was, music was what I wanted to do, and I really didn't get to make that choice for myself until college, when I was separated from all of that. Um, but when I was in high school, I had a really strong music program I was fortunate to have at my school, really strong jazz program, and that's my favorite genre of music, personally. Um, that's where I feel like most of my influence comes from, and where I look for new creative ideas is through jazz. Um, and so in high school, it was a lot of swing music, a lot of things like that, big band stuff, up to bebop. Um, but then when I got to college, I um, studied with Dr. Paul Smoker, and he was more based towards the end of his life in avant-garde and kind of creative expression music. Um, so that kind of got me thinking about using different influences in one way. So I might be a jazz musician, but I can take elements from lots of different things, which I think contributed to what became our sound. I was going to say, it sounds like you two have actually had to do a fair amount of adjustment, mm -hmm. not just playing out, yeah. but, but playing with each other. Sure. Definitely. The longer I've been playing with Sarah, I definitely have more of like a jazz R&B feel than when I started yeah. mm -hmm. and then and I definitely picked up a lot of blues and more rock idioms from her because that's not necessarily the music I would choose to listen to on mm -hmm. my own but through like sending each other videos and music mm -hmm. and just like listening to what the others like like one of Meg's favorite bands is the Tedeschi Trucks band mm -hmm. who I wouldn't have found or listened to on my own but I've grown to love them mm -hmm. And they have become a part of my own sound and influence. And I'm always sending her jazz videos oh, yeah. and like Erica Badu and Lauren Hill yeah. stuff. Like yeah. that's yeah. that's me. So now, for you specifically, Sarah, was like, was it um, another mental adjustment? Maybe physical adjustment too. As a multi instrumentalist myself, and I speak for uh, other people who both play, who both go from brass to string or sure. brass to rhythm. What was the the change like for you? Saying, okay, I, I'm a trumpet player playing with Megan now. 
oh, we're also playing guitar together. And oh, I'm like, you do go on the guitar and you're like, well, that's a trumpet. Like, I can't do that. I think it's just thinking about how you fit into the music. Yeah. Um, so the trumpet lines that I was playing, being a vocalist as well, I like trumpet and vocals go together, I think, hand in hand because you're playing melodically and the trumpet coming from your air and your breath is your voice, you know? But I think... With guitar, you are com you're playing the whole time, and yeah. that's the first time for me that I was involved in performance the whole time. Because trumpet and band and orchestra and jazz, you're never playing the whole time, and so you really have to think about how you can alter what you're playing and yeah. what your purpose is in the music. You can't just like chank along, you know. <laughs> <Right. laughs> um, so it's different and. I play in a band in Buffalo where I have to switch during like songs, playing guitar and trumpet. So I think just knowing that they're each separate entities and knowing exactly what I want their purpose to be in the music. And it's definitely something that's developing all the time still. Is this, is this something you kind of had, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, but do you have to like coach her up on any of this stuff? No. Yeah. Oh no, no. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're always, we're like, we kind of coach each other. Yeah. Really. Like it's really such a... Combined. It, it works so seamlessly mm -hmm. and so fluid. Yeah, it, um, it just happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I've always musically liked being like a supportive force as mm -hmm. opposed to like a leading force. Weird that you picked so, trumpet then. I picked trumpet because my mother wanted me to play the flute. So <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> that's that's a rebellious uh, blues spirit right there. I, Mom, you want me to play right. the flute? I'm gonna play the most obnoxious, loud thing I can. And I've always just kind of had the personality of like a dare to be different kind of thing. So all the girls were choosing those different instruments, so I wanted to play the trumpet. <laughs> right. Um, I almost feel like kind of similar. Like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. play the electric guitar. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> so. um, and it's fun to have those shining moments, but I think I love, and what drew me to the field of music therapy too, is I love being a supporting musical force for people. And so I enjoy that with Meg. I get to support the amazing stuff that she's doing on guitar. Mm -hmm. And I think in this setting, it's allowed her so much more to open up and show her guitar skills because she can, like on the clip that we were just doing, she can play all these different licks and riffs where she doesn't have to hold down the chords. Like, now I can right. do that for mm -hmm. her. So I think it allows us to, like, open up to our true music. Yeah. Gotta see what's on my mind. Lord knows you do that all the time. Love shouldn't be like two people working overtime. I know that we've got problems. I know we feel it too. And now you're asking what are we supposed to do? We're back. So it seems like you guys, it seems like this is a very cooperative thing. Like this is a very laid back thing. You guys have used terms like fluid and random yeah. <laughs> to, to describe your song making, but maybe from the outside looking in, someone could easily see this as. Uh, a Batman and, and Robin situation, just because Meg, you know, came up with the band first, and then you right. joined, and you've described your own role as supportive, but maybe, I'm just going to start with you, Meg, because you were kind of the songwriter first. How do you guys describe, how do you, would you describe your process, and then learning to work with each other process. <laughs> in a conducive way? <laughs> like, of songwriting? Yeah. I write the song, yeah. show it to Sarah, and then we play it. Yeah, that's pretty that's much. It. Yeah, I was like, Meg will always, we love sending each other like voice memos. Oh, yeah. And for the past couple of years, it started off with horn lines. And actually, this is funny. The, um, one of the more recent songs that Meg wrote sounds just like a horn line I sent her two years ago. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just be usually in the bathroom, and I'm like, but up. But I'll gotta get my phone out, and I'll just send her this horn line, and she'll be like, sick! And we'll just send each other ideas, and yeah. sometimes it's, I mean, we live together. Right. And I'll just be in my room, and she'll be like, I got this new song, I'm gonna come out and play it. And she'll play it, sometimes it has lyrics, sometimes it doesn't have lyrics, sometimes it's finished, sometimes it's just a chorus. And That's we'll just, definitely how both of these songs yeah. started. And we'll just kind of workshop things, and we'll like work out, like nitpick through some lines, mm -hmm. Um, the vocal harmonies, like I think the arrangements are what we really yeah. work on together. 
Meg does the songwriting for sure. And then we'll sit down and we'll work through like updated lyrics, yeah. some vocal harmonies, how to add another guitar, mm-hmm. what like licks we want to highlight, um, just things like that. Like what parts to add, what parts to cut out. Yeah. Like, kind of, yeah, exactly. More of like the arranging, kind of working like, here's right. how we should phrase this and mm-hmm. here's like the harmony we're going for. Yeah. And mm-hmm. definitely. How did you two decide who sings lead, who sings harmony? Because ego is always a thing when it comes to musicians. Even if you two, you two are obviously close friends, but even between friends, there's always an ego to be managed. Is this is this something that you guys have to wrestle with? No. I've honestly never felt an ego struggle in this. Never. Yeah, I think never. we've we've always known what our kind of roles are and I love harmonies like that's my thing yeah that's like probably I think we really both know our strengths Mm -hmm. and um like there's some things that she can sing that I never sing I'm like you're taking the bridge like like, she's writing the songs you know I think my strengths lie in arranging and adding like different vocal parts Miss and different Jazz musical musician. parts. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of, we have a video on Facebook, we did one version of um, her in with my loop station. Mm-hmm. And I think like that epitomizes my kind of musical contribution to things. Mm-hmm. Is that I'm always thinking about like little cool things to add in. And mm-hmm. even when I listen to songs on the radio, I don't remember like the lyrics or the melody as much as I remember like this random synth phrase that was in yeah. like the second verse. So true. Yeah. yeah. There's just I love that kind of stuff. Or like the hooves in Michael Jackson. <laughs> like, that's, that's the kind of stuff I love. Yeah. And so I think it makes it easy because we're not the same musicians mm-hmm. and we're not trying to compete for the limelight in anything. Mm-hmm. We both have a role in this that we like appreciate and know exists. Mm-hmm. And I think we both like allow each other to bring that out. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of uh, going off of this. You two. You two are very, very collaborative. It, it's it's Meg and Sarah playing. Mm-hmm. You know, we we've discussed how okay, this is really collaboration, not a, a sidekick partner thing. So I just something kind of struck me as we were talking. You, neither of you look like typical blues singers. I don't mean that in any other way than a factual observation. We both showered today. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> but, so, how Probably did you... Probably a better description would almost be more like soulful rock. Kind yeah. of have like those blues soul. Like just um, stone. Kind of like... Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Is, is there but any, I know what you mean. Yeah, is, 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 is there any cultivation... Of image for you guys, like you look at John Lewis, for example, just be, just because we interviewed him and he's we in my brain. John. He did the video. Yeah, right. yeah. He did. We will talk about you, John, and that later. So don't don't you worry. But John, he he looks like his shtick. Mm-hmm. And, that, and again, I don't mean that in any bad or you know bad way. But for you guys, is there a marketing process involved with saying? You know, we, th- this is what we do, even though I, this is not what we look. Not what we look. I mean, like. I think it's less about how we look and more about how we sound. I was just yeah. gonna say that. Yeah, I think we both kind of toyed with the idea. Neither of us are too into like clothing or makeup or things like that. And we've like yeah. tried and toyed with it. <laughs> and tried. So, yeah, we try to like coordinate for shows and things like that. But I think our music has always come before how like our mm-hmm. appearance. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we, we always put that. the music and what we sound like first, and then yeah. And I think that's just how it's worked out. It's not like we don't care about how that's portrayed, but I think both of us are very eclectic in personality and in music, and I think that shows in how we appear mm-hmm. as well. So do you have to think about that going into a music video? Is this the first thing you guys had done like this, where you're going into a music video and you're going for a look? And you're going for an aesthetic. Was was this was this so, a tricky balance for you guys? Like going there and just trying to figure out what to do. Like the look that we go for is bad bitch. Okay. When we have a show together, so that's so whenever sometimes she'll just pop her head out of a room and be like, "Are you doing bad bitch tonight for the show?" And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, yeah." <laughs> and like pretty much that means for us like either black dress, red dress. Yeah. Um, jeans and a black shirt. Or jeans and a black shirt. <laughs> and high heeled boots or black shoes red and red lips. lips. Yeah. And so like that's kind of our thing when we perform and that's what we did in the video as yeah. well. But that's like not what we look like all day. 
Yeah. For sure. <laughs> you, now, I, I overheard a little bit that someone was a little goofy <laughs> Dur during the video shoot. We got, I think our viewers, no. our, all four of our viewers would like to hear the story of a goofy Sarah Rogers during well, the video shoot. Well, that's 24-7. <laughs> but on the day of our music video, it was at 10 a.m., and that's early on a Saturday, I think, for music and for video taping. It started even earlier, though, though when we went to Jines in our We went nice, out to breakfast. Nice mm -hmm. outfits. And our yeah. Sunday best. Our yeah. Saturday best. <laughs> Saturday best. Yeah. I was just very loopy all morning. Um, but it's just because I love what I'm doing. Yeah. And I can we're be... Just a great time. Yeah, I can be 100% <laughs> me doing what we're doing, so... What, what, were, what was the songwriting experience? Did you draw on anything personal? For, the, for these two songs, and why did you pick these two to do a music video? Um, I think that they just really showcased the sound. Our, like, new sound. Yeah, our new sound the best. Mm -hmm. um, it has the most, like, collaborative singing, guitar playing right. out of all our stuff currently. Yeah. Um, and really, I feel like also we worked through the process together, like, she heard these songs from the start when it was just a riff, and then it was like, okay, I got kind of a verse, and here's my yeah. chorus, and so it was kind of, we worked on these songs together from the start, right? So I feel, I, I almost feel like most personally connected to our duo with these songs. I agree. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the first time, like, we each had parts for mm -hmm. the songs, with but the that are not more lines mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Um... Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just, like, improvised on the spot. We're mm -hmm. doing this arrangement. It was like we sat down days, weeks. Mm -hmm. They really developed into what they are. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time we've done this together. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me and talking about yourselves and your upcoming, upcoming music videos. Now, for our four listeners, if you would want to find Meg Williams' music and check out what these two are doing, just look mm -hmm. in the description below. I'll have that for you guys. And stay tuned to Meg's page for the new music videos, Not My Problem and Hurtin'. Guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thanks, Woo! And uh, take care. We'll see you next time. All you do is Not my